Hello, my name's Lee Tepley, and that's a shot of me filming Hot Lava Underwater in 1973. You'll be watching excerpts from my 20-minute film, Fire Under the Sea. So here we go. In 1971, a team of diving scientists entered the water for the first time to study an active undersea lava flow. In 1972 and 73, scientists again studied the undersea flows. This film documents their undersea observations. At the surface, conditions were often hazardous. Heavy seas, crashing surf, streams of molten lava, and clouds of steam rising from boiling water. Beneath the surface, the water was sometimes calm. The diver descends with a device developed to record undersea sounds. The sounds of the undersea lava flows that you will hear in this film are not simulated. They were recorded with this device. The diver swims toward a black sand cloud. We follow the diver into the cloud and observe for the first time the formation of pillow lava. Typically, a pillow starts as a red-hot crack, or fracture, in thin black crust. Then the crust moves outward, away from the crack, and the pillow grows. The crust is less than an inch thick. Inside is molten lava. Growing at about 8 inches per second, the pillow moves about 7 feet down a gentle slope. Then it implodes. In slow motion, watch the lava cool and turn black as it leaves the fracture. The pillow grows, but the width of the crack stays about the same. Most of the time, Growing pillows are bent downward by gravity. Sometimes they break off and tumble down the slope. Where the slope is very steep, the lava flows away from the crack faster than it can cool. And for a few seconds, the lava flows red hot. But lava does not always flow downward. Accompanied by frequent implosions, small pillows break out of a rock in all directions, including straight up. Beneath this rock lies a tube of molten lava. Gas trapped inside cools and contracts as the lava emerges, leaving cavities inside the pillow. Water pressure on the brittle crust causes the pillow to collapse violently or implode. Implosions like this are painful to divers.
the movie camera is held close to a glowing crack. The cameraman motions another diver to move in. The second diver holds a movie camera about one foot away from the flow. A close-up dramatically illustrates how lava cools as it flows away from the fracture. There is always a very thin layer of steam above the red-hot crack. The steam helps to insulate the water from the hot lava. Currents also help dissipate the heat, but divers still encountered water temperatures exceeding 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Filming downward on flowing lava, the cameraman is caught in a swirling current of hot water rising from the flow. What appears to be a blue flame rises from the cracks. Is this steam backlighted by glowing lava? Or perhaps escaping gas? We don't know the answer. Initially, divers were wary of the undersea lava activity. Later, their confidence increased. A diver picks at a rock and exposes molten lava beneath the thin crust. It feels like stiff tar. The diver attempts to break open a pillow. It opens on the far side and lava hits the diver in the back. diver tries again. Then, heavy surge almost carries the camera into the hot lava. In very shallow water, a free diver stabs at the thin crust with a hand spear. Molten lava is exposed and a long, thin pillow starts to grow. pillow implodes as it advances. Small implosions were common during pillow formation. Explosions were rare and unexpected. Here a diver films a small pillow at about 80 foot depth. Watch for the explosion. The diver was stunned for only a few seconds. But if the concussion had been any greater, he could have lost consciousness. What caused the explosion? We don't know. We do know, however, that observations like this should be made by experienced divers and only with great caution. We have documented in this film for the first time the sound and fire of molten lava flowing under the sea. We have gained new insight into the origin of pillow lava, the most abundant volcanic rock on Earth. We now know that through the ages, countless pillows were formed like this, some to be exposed, eons later, on land, but most to remain unseen in the depths of the sea.